Hey everybody, Cajun Techie here. You know, over the last couple of weeks, since the announcement of the upcoming iPhone 4, I've been doing a lot of thinking about iPhone as a platform and as a developer, how I can best reach my users that are on that platform. Because there's really no denying, as much as I'd like to say, well, I'm a Windows Mobile developer, I'm a Blackberry developer, I think it's really naive for me to leave out iPhone totally because, you know, it's a very important platform. Captured 48% of the mobile market uh, the first quarter or the first half of 2008. Um, needless to say, it's there. We have to address it as developers. But, I, you know, I've been thinking about the way that Apple does business and thus forces us as developers to be business. If we want to be on the iPhone, traditionally the path has been through Apple. You develop your application on a Macintosh. You submit it to Apple for review. And if they like it and if they agree that it's a good application to the App Store, then they're going to include it for your users to go to iTunes and uh, download it. And that's all fine and well for developers who want to reach, you know, a million people with a free game or who want to reach, um, you know, a specific market. But what about developers who don't want to take uh, the time or the investment to, one, buy a new Macintosh? Now, granted, they're cheap. They're five to six hundred dollars, but it's still an expenditure for a small developer. Or developers who are wanting to create a niche product that might not fit within Apple's guidelines as far as being approved to sit in the App Store. Um, you know, or just don't want to wait, really, you know, just want to have total control over their application. So, what I've been looking at a lot lately, particularly since I saw a video on Robert Scoble's blog about Next Stop, is using the mobile Safari platform as a platform for developing applications for the iPhone. Now, using mobile Safari, you can literally create beautifully compelling applications that are true web apps. They're, they're no different than, you know, what you're creating on the web. You're using the exact same skills that you're using on the web. You're using CSS, you're using HTML, you're using PHP, JavaScript, all those things you're using on the web, but you have an additional API that allows you to make it look like a native iPhone application. So you've got all the goodness, or most of the goodness, of an iPhone native application sitting right in the Safari web browser um, where you have total control over your application. Now, there are some there are some drawbacks to that. You know, whenever you go through the App Store, you do have a company that is handling all of your billing and your payment and all of that. Uh, you have a kind of a media, uh, you know, an, an intermediary that allows you uh, to kind of take off some of the support headaches that you have. But there's also some drawbacks to that. One of the drawbacks, of course, is every single time you update your application, you've got to go through the approval process. Users have to download the new version, and that can get a bit tedious. If you take the web app route, which is the route that I seriously am thinking about taking for the next or for the foreseeable future, you lose Apple's intermediary, so you don't have somebody to handle your billing uh, or you know take that that step away from you. But you have total control of your application, and you can really do pretty much anything that you want without having to adhere to Apple's guidelines. You don't have to, you know, if you want to make an adult-centered application, you can do that. If you want to make an application that does specific things that Apple denies, that says you cannot do um, and, and be included in the App Store, you can do that because Apple has no control over it. Apple can't stop your users um, from going and, and, and using your application, your web application. Now, you do lose a little bit of hardware control because there are things you can't do, like you really can't access the camera. Well, you can access the camera, but you can't easily upload video uh, into uh, an application, which may change with iPhone 4. We'll have to see. Um, and there are some little tips and tricks that might require you to create um, like a helper application or something like that that may have to go through the iStore or the App Store. Um, but overall, you have a really compelling platform to create very compelling applications that you have total control over. And I think that for most developers, for most small developers who are really looking to get on the iPhone without the investment in the hardware and the investment in the App Store and the time that it takes to get in the App Store, I think web apps are a really important and compelling option uh, as opposed to traditional App Store uh, submissions. And so, you know, what, do you, what does it take to get into the App Store? It takes a Macintosh for you to develop on. It takes the being part of the Apple Developer Program, which costs you $99 a year. It costs you time for learning Objective-C if you don't already know it. And then it takes time for you to get into the App Store once you develop your application. 
which can take anywhere from weeks to we've heard stories months. Compare that to what it takes you to deploy a web app. If you write a web app, which can be very quick, it looks and, and, and functions just like an iPhone app, can even be added to the home screen, and there's absolutely no investment required in hardware or software because you can use Notepad on Windows or Pico even or Vi on Linux or any of the free text editors that come with any operating system to create your web app and there's absolutely zero delay on getting your app submitted. You get it in, you develop it, you, de you, know, you deploy it, you start pushing it to your users, you tell them about it and it's there on their device. The link is there on their home screen they just have to add it. Now again there is a drawback there. You lose that that link that Apple has. If I go to the App Store and I search for an application, it's a web app, it's not going to be there. You know, I obviously I'm going to lose that market. But if I use my marketing skills creatively and I use my marketing skills effectively, it's not going to have a big big difference in I don't think my revenue. In fact, I'm not seeing that in a couple of web apps that I've uh, developed over the last couple of weeks. So for me, I think that my road to the iPhone is primarily going to be through web applications. iPhone 4 is going to expose some new compelling APIs. Uh, iPhone 4 is going to basically be the holy grail of, of mobile development for the foreseeable future. And if they introduce a couple of more open APIs that you can access through JavaScript, web apps are really going to be on par with, uh, with native applications on the device. So. What do you think? I mean, would you develop a web app instead of a, a native application? What would be the deciding factor that you would use to do that? And, uh, you know, let me know. Give me some feedback. What do you think about it? Have a great day.